Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next parent function that we're going to discuss. We got f of x equals the square root of x. So this is basically y equals the square root of x. Sometimes this is called the uh, radical function or the square root function. So let's make a table of values for this and uh, see how it's going to look on a graph. Now notice that all of the x values, they have to be greater than or equal to zero. Notice the x values can't be negative because you can't square root a negative number. If you tried to take like the square root of negative four, you'd get undefined in your calculator. So all the x values have to be greater than or equal to zero. They could equal zero because the square root of zero is just gonna be zero. And then the rest of the numbers have to be positive. So let's pick some x values here that make a smooth y value, meaning that uh, when you square root them, it's not gonna be a decimal. So one would be one of them. Square root of one is just one. Another one would be four. Square root of four is two. And then nine. Square root of nine is three. And then you could do 16, 25, 36, but let's uh, cap it off at nine. So if we take these points and plot them, how's this going to look? So we're gonna go all the way up to nine. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we'll have one, two, three. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then one, two, three, it's easy to see there. So we got zero and zero. We got one and one. We got four and two, which is here. And then we got nine and three, which is going to be over here, right? So if we connect all of these, this function is looking like that. This should be more of a smooth curve here. But uh, yeah, anyway, hopefully you see how that looks. Now, one thing I wanna mention here is Notice that the square root of a number, technically, it should be plus or minus. So for example, the square root of one is technically plus or minus one because one to the power of two gives us one and negative one to the power of two gives us one as well. Or the square root of four technically should be plus or minus two. So why did we only put positives here? Because technically they could be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three. And if that happens, then we're gonna have more points. We're gonna have negative y values as well. And if we were to plot those corresponding negative y values, we'd have one and negative one, we'd have four and negative two, then we'd have nine and negative three. And so there would be another part to this graph like this. The reason why we don't put the negatives is because this here, we're calling it a function, okay? We're calling it the square root function. It's a parent function. And so notice that if we were to put the negatives here and there was this other half of the graph, then notice it wouldn't pass the vertical line test, okay? So it wouldn't be a function anymore, right? So when you're dealing with the parent function, the square root of x, you're only dealing with the positive y values, the positive square roots, okay? So they would just be positive one, positive two, positive three, and we would ignore this part here. Now, one thing I wanna mention is if you see y equals the square root of x, then you only deal with the positive y values. But if you see something like y squared is equal to x or x equals y squared, notice that this and this are the same thing. Basically to get to here to here, we just squared both sides. And the square root of x squared is x and then y squared is y squared here. So this here, if you see something in this format, it's not in that proper function format, function notation here, right? Because the y is not isolated. We got y squared equals x. If you see something like this, then you would deal with the positive 
and negative y values. And so the graph of this would have both of these parts. It would look like that, right? And it wouldn't be a function. It would just be a relation because it would fail that vertical line test. So if you see something like this, you put both positives and negatives. But if you see something just like this, then we're dealing with the square root function. You would only put the positive y values and it would look like that. Okay, so let's find the domain and range for y equals the square root of x for this square root function here. So the domain and then the range. What's the domain? Well, we've mentioned this at the beginning of the video. Notice we can't square root any negative numbers. The x value has to be zero or positive. So we would say the domain is xer, but x has to be greater than or equal to zero. Or if we put in an interval notation, we say x is an element from zero to positive infinity. And then the range, notice that all the y values are zero or positive, right? We've talked about that. So the range for this square root function, this radical function would be y er, y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Or in this notation, it'd be y is an element from zero, inclusive of zero, hence that square bracket, to positive infinity. So that's the square root function, that's the domain, that is the range.